what is swing trading? Talking about swing trading, the overall idea of swing trading and how you can make money swing trading in the stock market. Talking about it in this video, so stay tuned. <music> What's going on guys? So there's a lot of different ways to make money in the stock market. You can do long-term investing, you can do day trading, you can do swing trading, you can do options trading. There's a lot of different ways to do it, a lot of different ways that people have figured it out, different strategies. And the best thing I think really is for people to figure out what works best for them, their type of trading, their type of schedule, and kind of just their overall game plan. I've seen people that make money in the weirdest ways in the stock market and it's not to say that they're doing it wrong or anyone's doing it right really at the end of the day it's about making money so i want to make this video talking about swing trading and kind of what i look for when i swing trade and also kind of the overall idea of what swing trading is comparing it to day trading because we normally talk about day trading but today we're talking about swing trading when i think about swing trading i think about day trading but on a much larger time frame so instead of looking at a one minute chart i'm looking at an hourly chart, a daily chart. I'm trying to identify larger trends on a larger time frame. So instead of just looking to make quick money in and out fast in one day, I might hold for two, three days, or maybe a week, maybe a month. It really depends on your overall plan for the swing trade. There's not really an exact formula, but the big thing really is to be able to identify trends. And I think when you day trade, you do kind of see these trends, you learn about these trends, so you can apply those same types of trends on a much larger time frame, which then makes you a swing trader. So you can really kind of combine the two aspects, day trading and swing trading, and be successful at both if you're able to identify the trends overall. But it's much easier to see the trend on the long term, on the much bigger picture, than it is to see the trend in the smaller time frame. So if you're looking at the one minute chart, the five minute chart, it's much more volatile. You know, a stock might jump up really fast and crash, and it might look like it's crashing. It might look like a bad thing, but if you look at the overall larger time frame, so you can see that it's trending in that certain way, or you can see the overall trend on that larger time frame. So that's what we're looking for when we're swing trading is to identify these trends. So kind of breaking down, looking at the chart here and give you guys an idea of what I look for when I'm swing trading and kind of that overall idea and plan. So normally when I'm looking for stocks that I want to swing trade, I'm looking for stocks that have had a pretty bullish chart and have pulled back down to support, uh, previous support that they have tested before, that they have held before. And you know the big thing here is to make sure that I'm swinging a stock that isn't going to crash on me. I'm not looking for very volatile stocks. I'm looking for just nice, steady gainers. Overall, it depends on what stock you're looking at in terms of volatility and the risk reward. But looking here at HD, this is Home Depot, and let's say I wanted to go swing trade on Home Depot. This is actually looking pretty similar to Walmart chart as well. So Home Depot, back in January, was up there, the $208 area. And since then, it's pulled back down here to the support area at the 175. Looking like we get some decent support there, kind of double bottom in there. And then some more support here, 176 areas. It's showing that there is support there, 50 EMA. You got the 100 EMA and then the 200-day moving average down here at the 171 area. So if I'm looking to swing trade this, where am I looking to swing trade? I'm looking to swing trade with, with the least amount of risk and a decent amount of reward. And I don't need to have a home run. I don't need to have, you know, oh, the stock's going to go up $100 in the next couple of weeks. I just need to get in on a swing trade that I feel like it has a good support area. So if I'm looking to swing trade here on HD, what am I looking at? I'm probably looking at 175, 176 area, buying this type of support there, hoping that we're going to break out of this downward descending triangle here. And then hopefully getting that move back up here to the 190. So you can see this 170, you can see this 190 area here was previous resistance. So let's say this thing pulls back down here to 175. Where is my profit goal going to be? It's going to be 190 area. If 190 area breaks, I would hope to get that $200 area. I want to be buying where I know there's support and I know that there's other things going on in that area. So let's say I buy there at 175. Look what's right below it, the 200 day moving average. So I know. And worse come to worse, if this thing really starts crashing, if it has it goes bad, it goes bad on me. That 170 area is going to be support, knowing that 200-day moving average is there. So I have you know a little bit of risk, and I'm looking at a possible move to 190. So the risk reward is there on this play. So MU the other day made a big move previously above this $50 area, and we talked about it in one of my videos. 
as how this kind of pulled back down here is bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Got down here to the 200 day moving average. Look at this from $39, made this move up there to 61 now. But it broke over that all time high. So that break over the all time high should have been a very clear indicator like, hey, something's going on here with EMU, and I might look to go long here. Where would I have entered this trade? I probably would have waited to get that move over the $50 area here on MU, seeing, you know, okay, boom, this is going over that all time high. If I was swinging a little bit longer, I would have bought back there at the 100 day or 200 day moving average. Look how this bounced off the 200 day moving average very nicely there from 37.52, bounced off a 200 day moving average, and then made this big move higher. And this would have really been a beautiful swing on this. I mean, look at this trend. Back in 2017, in August, it bounced off 200-day moving average, and look at it. Boom, up there to $50. So it went to all-time highs after bouncing off that 200-day moving average. So if I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, wow, the last time that it bounced off the 200-day moving average, it went to all-time highs. It bounced off 200-day moving average there in February, and look at it, up there to $62. Now, it broke over all-time high and then made an all-time high again. So MU making moves as well. We talked about it in one of my previous swing trading videos, what stocks I was watching. I didn't trade MU. I wish I would have. I should have pulled the trigger there on MU. Uh, still waiting for some other swings to kind of unfold. Swing trading Adobe. I'm not sure I would buy it right here. I might look for another pullback. Uh, with the earnings coming up, if Adobe beats, they'll probably have a nice little jump again, but not sure I'd want to jump in right here, right now on Adobe. Maybe if I'm just holding for a couple days. Uh, maybe I buy here at this area 221 with the hope that we might get to 230 before earnings. You could do it like that. It really just comes down to figuring out what works best. We're looking for stocks that are trending higher. Looking for stocks that have catalysts coming out. We don't want to just buy a stock that's not moving with the hope that it's going to move all of a sudden, but it never does. Most of the time when I'm swing trading in stocks, I'm looking for stocks that are big companies. Big companies that are safe, that aren't going to blow up on me. I'm not going to lose all my money on a swing trade on a stock like Adobe because it's a big company. Worst come to worst, I'm buying at a good kind of risk reward area and that's the important thing when you're swing trading you're trying to change up the mindset we're not looking for fast gains we're looking for consistent long-term gains if i can swing trade a couple different stocks every couple of weeks you know rack up you know five three four percent on each of those trades over a couple of weeks and then just keep adding that up on the year it's gonna be a nice little swing trading portfolio so that's the one big key here so hopefully that helps you guys learn a little bit more about swing trading and maybe you can apply some of these ideas to your overall investment strategy. Like I said before, really when it comes down to it, swing trading is about looking at that bigger picture. So look at the big picture. Try to figure out what's going on with the stock. Find a stock that you're interested in, research that stock, look at the trends, see when the next news is, see when the next earnings report is, and look at what's really going on fundamentally with that stock. If you're looking at a stock like Apple, Figure out, okay, when's the next big product release? Figure out what's the next big product. Is Apple possibly having trouble because they're not having any new products or what's really going on? So dive in. So do your own research. Really learn about the company and then you can apply those fundamental ideas or reasoning to the overall chart and you can see, okay, wow, the stock's dipping right here. It looks like it's on an overall trend. I want to ride this momentum. I'm going to swing trade this and look to take profit in the next couple weeks as we get closer to that ER or the product release. So there it is, swing trading. It's another tool that you can use in your trading arsenal. So if you guys haven't already, do me one big favor, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. So go ahead and click on some more videos to learn more about day trading, swing trading, and the stock market in general. And I'll talk to you guys later on.